Hello, welcome to my lifestyle ch ch channel. Like, comment, and subscribe. So this channel, it's um, I'm just sharing about myself and my life. Um, and if there's anything that you resonate with, you can uh, leave a comment. Uh, this I've decided to do a series and call it uh, my timeline. It's going to be about my chronological timeline, but I'm going to keep each part pretty short and simple. I'm not going to go. I'm not. This is not a comedy show, and it's not any type of show. I'm just going to keep it quite short and simple, and just get stick to the facts and the bullet points, basically. So, and it's part two. So, yesterday, I got up to uh, the point where I left school and I went to college. I went to one college and I left there and I couldn't remember the reason why I left there. And then I went to this other college called Joseph Chamberlain College. The thing is, I was talking about Sullyhall College and Joseph Chamberlain College. I can't actually remember if I went to Joseph Chamberlain College first and Sullyhall College afterwards. Or if I went to Sullyhall College first and then Joseph Chamberlain afterwards. I can't really remember, but... Maybe the more I talk about this, the more it will become familiar to me and I'll remember. I'm not sure. But let's say, for time's sake, for now, I talked about Silly Hill College and then I started talking about when I started um, Joseph Chamberlain College. So, Joseph Chamberlain College, basically, I've done three A-levels, which are business studies, theatre studies, and performing arts that's what i did when i first went there and um obviously their academic year starts in september so i was there like september when would it have been 1995 1996 yeah it would have been and uh five six yeah and um with me when i was at school i was just like uh i was like a nerd i was a bit of a nerd where especially when it got to my last two years at school when you're uh, doing your gcse preparation i started to stay the thing is when I was younger, when I was at school, I had one of these active minds where my mind would come alive and come busy at night time. So, I would, uh, when it got to my uh, last two years, GCSE preparation, we had a lot of revision to do. Some evenings, some days, I would stay up all night do my like just basically revising and doing my work till like three and four o'clock in the morning my brain would come alive at that time and it wouldn't switch off and i'd just till three four o'clock i'd be revising for my uh, exams and you know sometimes when you have a child and the child is like for, for example i'm working on this at the moment i'm doing this art piece at the moment it's not it's nowhere near finished so where can you see that Where's that yeah that's what i'm so for example if i was a child now and working on that you know some children are like this and they're like maybe just this one part they made a mistake and then they're like oh no i made a mistake look what i did oh no and then they go, oh no, look what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to throw it away now, and throw it in the bin, yeah, and I'm going to have to get another one, yeah, and start all over again, I'm going to have to start all over again now with this one, I have to start all over again now, yeah, I was this kind of nerd when I was at, I still, I do still have a bit of those perfectionist tendencies, but I did a lot of work on myself from that time onwards. So, uh, you know, I don't have those tendencies so much anymore the way that I used to when I was at school. You know, because obviously when... Yeah, so I was that kind of a bit like perfectionist nerdish when I was at school. That if I made one stupid tiny mistake, I'd have to like start throw the thing away and start my work all over again. I was like that. And this is why, you know, when it was coming to my exams, I was like 
staying up till three, four o'clock in the morning just to revise for my work. So when I got to a uh, college stage, I remember, uh, like I said, I was doing theatre studies, performing arts and business. And obviously you start the academic year in September, don't you? And it got to about Christmas time, like December time. And I remember just not being very happy with some of my grades because my teacher was giving me like, C, B and like B, B a minus, and C for some of my grades, and I just really remember feeling like, what's she giving me a C for? You know, I really worked hard on this. Can't you see? You know, what's going behind my work kind of thing. I was a bit like that, getting a bit knocked off. You know, that I wasn't getting better grades. And um, I think around that time, I just started to feel like uh, I just want to give up and start all over again. But there were other things that were influencing the way that I was feeling and that decision. And the things that I was influencing was basically, come January time, my nan passed away. And um, also, my mum had gone abroad. From the time I was eight, I was now like 16, so I've been waiting all this time to immigrate to America. And lo and behold, it was getting closer to the time when my family's green cards had a uh, time to go and live, to go to America was getting close. So I had all this going on in my mind, in my life. As well as my nan, she passed away. And I, I remember when my nan passed away, I didn't really like my nan from my dad's side. I didn't have, like, I didn't really, like, grieve, like, was really upset, like, crying and being upset. But I do remember going through a phase where it did, I think it did affect me. Yeah, I think it did affect me and uh, I started to... Uh, like, I started to stay up really late hours of the night. Like, I just, I wouldn't go sleeping at night time. And, uh, I mean, like, every day, every evening, I was up till, like, I, could, I just, I wouldn't go to sleep till about six, seven o'clock. I just wouldn't go to sleep. And it, it was like I just had this, like, uh, unnerving feeling. I wasn't, it wasn't that I was scared. But, um, basically, I, it was my first real uh, experience of death. And uh, this is how it affected me, sort of thing. I, I did get a bit sort of, um, you know, obviously it does affect you in some sort of way. And, um, yeah, so around that time, come January, February, I just said, um, I decided to, um, I just wanted to not go along to that, to college anymore. Because I was just having this feeling like I just want to start all over again with my college. And so that was like January time. I remember that because it was around the time that my nan passed away. I remember my dad going to college and having and talking with my teachers and whatever else. But um, a couple of months after that, in March, is when myself and my dad and my brother, my younger brother, we ended up emigrate into America so I wouldn't have been able to uh, complete that course anyway at that time anyway because it was it was a matter of basically like you know the time was ready and we had to go to America so, so when we went to America it was New York and uh, We was there about March time and um, around about March, April, May, June, about June I think, after about three months, I, me personally, I went to Boston and I went to Boston to do, it's called Jobs Corps. In the UK we would pronounce it Jobs Corps, Corps, C-O-R-P-S. Yeah, in America they call it Jobs Corps. Don't ask me why, cause I'm not. 
I don't know why they call it this. Like Jobs Corps. And um, if you're an American watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, we don't have this thing in the UK called Jobs Corps. So we don't know what the ha what that is. But basically, it's a bit like summer camp. But for uh, employment purposes. Sometimes they send um, the children away Mommy? to Jobs Corps. Mommy? It's like camp. It's like Mommy? summer camp. It's Mommy? like a camp. Yeah, so it's when they send the... Uh, it's like a camp where... Uh, for example, over here in the UK, you know when you go to the job centre and you learn about... Um, or you go for like, employment advice. And uh, there's a section where you can go to learn all about putting your CV together and putting an application form together you know and how to uh, do like telephone interview skills and to learn about what are your skills and what are your qualities for employment and all of this kind of thing so it's like a, it's a camp that young people go away to to do this activities based around this kind of thing you know and learning about themselves and developing and teamwork and all this kind of thing they do a lot of activities and this kind of thing and um it's usually as well for ch uh, for young people who th when they don't pass their uh when they don't pass their we would say gcse's in America, lot like when they don't pass the high school education, yeah, they send the children there. So all the young, not children, young adults there, young pe teenagers. So I went there, and while I was while I was there, uh, I don't know, I, don't know. I um I met some uh, I met like uh, some Barbadian Trinidadian females who became like my social group i wouldn't even call them my friends really just like my social group and um i always remember this one dude who was there i, I thought was really good looking really really att attractive really attracted to him and he was very tall like a light-skinned dude a bit like a basketball player type of look he had you know american basketball players kind of mixed race i really was i really fancied him but um, basically i was there for about so there's three things i remember from this place one thing was uh, somebody i became friends with and um i think she was somalian or some type of african yeah she was absolutely lovely and uh, I always wish that I'd stayed in contact with her. I do meet people when I've gone abroad, and I always end up wishing that I'd stayed in contact with them. And I usually try to, but it just never seems to happen for whatever reason. God doesn't want it to happen. But she's one person I always, I would have liked to have made a pen pal friend of her. The other thing I always remember is um the the rest of other girls that I used to go around with. Like I said, there was like one was American. And there was like two Trinidadians and one like Barbadian or something like this. <laughs> and um, I always remember like one of them asking me like how much money I had on me, and when uh, when me telling her, and it was like I just remember like she was just trying to gauge like <laughs> how, because I was English. That like, used to call me oh it's Miss English, you know they used to try and gauge what kind of background I was from and if I was from like if I had if my family had money and if I had money you know but I was so naive like at this age you know around this time I didn't even I don't think it even really registered you know and around this time if somebody asked me a question I would just be like oh yeah I got this amount of money on me I got like yeah this amount of money on me I remember being like what what is that all what like this you know i still am a bit like that i'm just very like you know somebody asks me something i'm not like it's not in my instinct to lie you know i'm not a liar or a fabricator or an exaggerator you know but um anyway times have changed now things are so different now to how things were back then but back then 
people were a bit more like, you know, you just took people at face value. You know, people were a bit more like that. But what I'm saying is I was a bit, na I was a little bit naive. You know. But, yeah, she, uh, she was just trying to find out like, how, if I was, if I came from a wealthy background. Because I was English, you know, you used to call me English. And the other thing I remember is, obviously when you go to these places, there's it's always like a communal room that you share, where you sleep. You all sleep in the same communal room. And then for your laundry, you know, there's like a laundry room where they've got so many washer laundries. Uh, you know, and you have to take your turns to use them, you know, the same as the kitchen or whatever. And um, I had this uh, Ralph Lauren white t-shirt, polo, polo Ralph Lauren white t-shirt with red, red, blue and white on it. And I really loved this t-shirt and I remember pulling it in the laundry and when I went back to get it, someone nicked it, it had gone. So that's another thing I always remember. Another thing I always remember is this dude I found quite highly attractive, basically just i'm not even going to say what it was because it was just it was so stupid and it was so petty and so stupid but something happened and i just i got so you know and you get so embarrassed i was so embarrassed when this thing happened i just wanted to die i literally wanted to just die and i think that day when this petty stupid thing happened i'm not even going to say what it was you know I just wanted to, I couldn't have left that place any sooner or any quicker. And I just wanted to get the hell out of that place because I just, I was so embarrassed. I just wanted to die. Yeah. But lo and behold, over the same day, or around the same time, I found out that I didn't even need to be at this jobs call place. Because when you go to these places in America, what they do is they test all the young kids. They give them like eye tests. You have to do your eye twenty twenty testings with the letters. You have to do drugs tests to test your urine to see if you got smoke or if you got drink or drugs or alcohol in your system. And um, basically, the coordinators realised that I had all my certificates from England. I had all my GCSEs, and one of the ladies, she was so lovely. She was like, "Oh, honey." If you got all your, you know, Americans, if you got all your, your qualifications from England, she was like, honey, you don't need, you don't have to be here. She was like, you don't need to do your GED because this is, this place is for people who do not have their high school diploma. So they come here, they get their GED, but you don't have to get your GED, honey, because you already have all of your qualifications from England. So, because I just I was about to die of embarrassment anyway, I just was so happy. I couldn't have heard something more better when she told me this. I was just so happy and so glad to get the hell out of that place. So, yeah, I think I was there for about four weeks or something. And then, lo and behold, I just, I, you know, I was back in New York. So, anyway, that's part two of uh, my timeline chronology. So, uh, yeah, tune in to find out about my life, about Martin Sparks' life story, yeah? And, um, like I said, leave a comment if you've had any similar experiences. Yeah. Anyway, as for now, adios, buenos noches, good night. I've got things to do, good night.